Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to study about NAITL scintillation detector. What is a scintillation detector? It is a detector which uses the property of scintillation to study the radiation and give us the desired output result. A scintillation is a property of material medium that when a charged particle enters, it absorbs that energy and leads to the emission of light. In simple way, let us understand it with the help of an example. Say, gamma radiations are incident on the material, then there is interaction which results in the radiation in the form of light. This is then transferred to the PMT that is photomultiplier tube. Here there are various dynodes. So these uh, excited electrons, they multiply at subsequent level in the dynode as they have very higher potential level, uh, level at every stage. From here they are connected at the anode and from anode they are sent to the PA and LA which is free amplifier and linear amplifier. From here on they are sent to SCA, M MCA which is single and multi-channel analyzer and finally they are sent at the counter for observation. So what is the role of PA and LA? Sim in simple way, it is the amplification of the signal so that the device can use it for the purpose of calculation. From here, it is sent to the analyzer. Now analyzer means there are various modes present. We can select any one of them and use it for our purpose. There is a principle of photoelectric effect involved. In simple way, when the electron absorb energy, it goes to the higher energy level and then falls back to the lower energy level after some time. So this travel time which the electron takes, there is emittance of light and which is in the form of radiation. So this is what is captured and this gets multiplied with the help of dynode. So this is how we see the result. The NaITL material is coated in aluminium to protect it from moisture. And also, this NaITL is inorganic in nature. There is a very high voltage supply given to the PMT so that the amplification is possible with the help of larger reading. And this flash of light which is produced in the PMT is current, current pulse. So this is how simple principle is. When NaITL is interacted with radiation, it produces flash of light which is transformed into an electric current and allowed to strike a surface called photocathode. So these, this is a photocathode and this is a dynode and this is an anode. So this is how it works and the principle follows. Let us see the construction how it works. So the initial part of NaITL TL scintillating material and it's coated in aluminium to protect it from moisture. This is inorganic in nature. There is a small window. The window is present right over here. This window after which photocathode is connected inside PMT. Now this photocathode is made up of alkali metals in which valence electrons are weakly bound and have high cross section for converting photons to electrons via photoelectric effect. Simply if there is one electron in the outermost shell, it is easy to remove that electron and hence this is possible to use alkali element. So for example, we can use CS3SB that is cesium antimony. So next is the dynode. The dynodes are made up of Mg or B that is magnesium oxide or beryllium oxide. Dynode is a plate with a surface from which electrons are easily knocked out as earlier explained. So the photo multiplier has 6 to 14 such dynodes. Each of this dynode is maintained at a voltage higher than the previous one. So for example, if the first dynode has a potential of 100 volt, the next one will be 200 volt and subsequently it increases. The end part is photo anode. Here all the radiations are captured. After PMT, there is a PA and LA. For 
your external uh, for your additional knowledge there are three types of pa that is charge sensitive voltage sensitive and current sensitive and these pa and la which are amplifiers are made up of operational amplifiers also la is subsequently connected to sca and then mca in the end the result is counted or recorded let us now see the working how it works when radiation hit the crystal of a solid material the electrons in the crystal are knocked out of their sites in the crystal when one electron falls back into these vacancies the light is emitted it happens because as electron gain energy they jump from valence band to conduction band and after fraction of seconds they lose energy and go back to valence band by emitting radiation in the form of light and all this process takes place in just fraction of second that is 10 raised to minus 8 second for nai tl scintillator the light output is about 1 photon per electron hole pair originally formed so that the process is quite efficient here thallium acts as activator using a voltage potential this group of primary electrons is electrostatically accelerated and focused so that they strike the first diode with enough energy to release additional electrons so here when the electrons are uh, uh, excited they hit at the diode and there are secondary electrons generated these secondary electrons again hit the next diode and again there are secondary electrons produced and hence they multiply in this manner so using a voltage potential this group of primary electron is electrostatically accelerated so these electrons are operated at ever increasing potential at each diode 3 to 4 electrons are released for every incident electron and with 6 to 14 diodes total gain or electron amplification factor will be in the range of 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 7 when they reach the anode the electrons from the last diode are finally collected at anode and a pulse is generated this current pulse is given to the amplifiers where amplification takes place finally signal is sent to the analyzers where pulse get analyzed now for sca there are three types of mode the first is integral mode the second is window mode the third is normal mode and for mca there are two modes that is pulse height analysis mode and multi channel scalar mode so this signal get analyzed in different modes and finally the current pulse is recorded in the counter so how can we use this detector in our day to day life this is used widely for radiation protection then in the physics research then the measurement of gamma radiation so i hope the explanation has been clear if you have any doubts please feel free to comment and please like share and subscribe thank you